Ravi. Uh, my question is, if our God is a loving God, why is the path to heaven so narrow? Why is it? The path to heaven so narrow. Oh, okay. If God is a loving God, why is the path to heaven so narrow? For the same reason, the law of gravity is just one. You can't have your own law of gravity, and I have my own law of gravity. Truth, by definition, will always be restrictive. If the alternative is taken, that you do not have any restriction to truth, then there's no real distinction between truth and error. Truth will always have its boundaries. But I realize what you're saying beyond that. Your question is really not that where the truth has its boundaries, but why are the boundaries not including so many others who may try so hard and work so hard within their own consciences and so on. So I would just say this to you. Whenever you get a legitimate currency, there will always be those who try to come up with a counterfeit currency. The fascinating thing to me is it is really not narrow. To me, it is so merciful that it would be narrow if I were told how many laws I had to obey in order to get there, how many events I had to observe in order to get there, how much money I had to give in order to get there, what I had to do to break out of a caste system, to climb the ladder. That to me would be narrow. If you take, for example, the pantheistic worldview and the caste system today, where you can do nothing to change why you are born this way. Your karmic debt has to be paid and has to be paid and has to be paid. That's narrow. You cannot break free from the shackles of the caste of your birth. The Islamic worldview to me is very narrow. You have to observe the five pillars. You have to pray in this direction. You have to give that much. You have to uh, uh, obey, say the creed and the shahada and all. And you have to do the fast of Ramadan. And if you possibly can, you've got, got. Those are very narrow restrictions to me. When the Lord Jesus says, if anyone comes unto me, I will in no wise cast him out. I don't see that as narrow. I see that as all of a sudden opening the floodgate, the gates of heaven, so that anyone who calls unto him can receive his forgiveness. The narrowness lies in the fact that I cannot manufacture my own truth. God is one. And God's provision is for you and for me. And all he's asked of us is to receive that provision. And if I turn my back upon that provision and want to find my own answer, then I am not being admitting to the generosity of God. I'm wanting to become narrow in my own choices. So I don't see it as narrow at all. The grace of God is the most abundant gift. And the final thing I will say to you is, you know, there are many times that I have seen or heard of what all happens in a person's deathbed. And I'm, I'm not a medical practitioner, but I have heard that sometimes the hearing may be one of the last senses to go. And even if they cannot gesture to you, they can hear things that you are saying. My wife and her sister are here and his daughters were uh, at his bedside uh, where my, their father, when he died at the age of 85, his daughters were at his bedside and his wife, and his wife of 60 some years. He was a great man, one of the greatest men I've ever known, always lived by the book as it were. But in the days before he died, he was struggling because it all happened so suddenly. It came as a shock to him. He was so healthy, he developed some back pain and thought, it was removing some bookshelves, found out there was cancer, I think, in the kidney or something, and ultimately, I think within a matter of a few weeks, he was gone. But he was silent for some protracted period of time. But his last two statements, where he looked to the heavens and he said, amazing, that's just amazing. And then he looked at his wife and said, Jean, I love you, and he was gone. Coming out of silence, what glimpse was given to him, I'm waiting for that day. 
and then to be able to honor your trust and say, I, lo I love you. So sometimes people in their silence, even on their deathbed, you and I never know what's going on between God and them. And we leave that in the hands of the living God. He knows how to deal even with a person who cannot speak to you or me. He can speak to them. So take that in your heart. Thank you. Okay.